I worked with Eric Hurst as composer. I was one of many composers that he worked with and commissioned on new ballets. I think it was 12 or more composers that he worked with. And uh, I probably did more ballets with him than any other of the composers he worked with. It was um, an incredible uh, rich period for both of them. When Eric and uh, Webb worked together, it was always with such spontaneity and always with humor and frustrations too as well. Because oftentimes Webb had very specific he would choreograph music to very vivid images. And for Eric, then, it, Eric had such vivid images each time he heard music. So they were both uh, very, very creative. And uh, sometimes Eric felt a little bit um, too confined by uh, a, having a, a defined script. Um, but Overall, it always turned out just, just wonderful. But the process of it was always, it was, it was never a dull moment. Um, one of Eric's tour de force was the Premier Classique, uh, which opened the Place des Arts in Montreal, was the first performance given in the new Place des Arts, if I understand, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the late 60s, in yes. The, in the late 60s. And that, that was, to me, uh, seeing that, the film of that, I saw immediately the relationship between that work, which was from 20 years before I knew Eric, I could see the relationship uh, of that to his contemporary work. Uh, his work with a group always had this dynamic and you see it in Premier Classique, you see it in polonaise and waltzes and ballets that, that I did with him. I'm holding the score of Air for Strings in my hands here. Air for Strings was the second movement of my second symphony, and I played the music for the choreographer, Eric Hurst, and he thought it would make a good ballet. And he asked me, first off, what I thought it expressed. And so I told him my thoughts about the music and also what I thought, what kind of a ballet might come from that. I told him that I thought the music is about isolation in a general sense uh, from the world, uh, from society. And that's exactly what the ballet became. The leading male, is the protagonist, could represent anyone who goes through life and experiences a degree of alienation or isolation from society.
The four women in the ballet exemplify, they, they represent society. They're not, one shouldn't assume, one shouldn't assume that those are affairs that he had. This is, they, they represent the social aspect of life and anything that the protagonist could experience encountering society. Although there isn't an attempt to show every aspect of society, there is the thread or the theme running through of acceptance and rejection. In fact, that was what we used to call the ballet to ourselves, the, re the rejection ballet. But it really is much more than that. It is a very universal theme of how in the course of one's life one might feel accepted by the world and at other times not at all or feel on the outside. Thank <laughs> you. 